um, example we had last time and sort of breaking it out into two separate pages. Um, my goal uh, today is, first of all, talk about linking files together. All right? In other words, linking our pages together. So, for example, you did a lab for lab one, you did a lab for lab two, those two should be linked together. We'll talk about how to do that. Uh, we've pretty much covered that, but there's just a little bit of, of a, a, a quirk that we want to talk about. Second thing I want to do is I want to talk about external CSS. And then I want to get into um, the use of images for backgrounds, all right? Um, which is sort of a different usage of image than, than the kind of usage that we used in, in the previous examples. So let's look at what I did and, and we'll go from there. Um, I really essentially took my cat example from last time and simply made two pages from it. One page for each cat. All right. So there's the first page. Here is the second page. All right. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to link them together. So from the first page I want to go to the second page and the second page I want to go to the first page. So <clears throat> I'll go into each of the pages and I'll put I guess it really doesn't matter where. I will put maybe at the very top in a, in a paragraph. Again, it's going to be a link, so it's going to be an A tag. Now the only difference between this and the links that we've looked at so far is this is not a link elsewhere on the internet. All right? This is a link to one of our own pages. And to start out, I'm keeping everything in one folder. All right? Later on we'll talk about what to do if they're in, uh, in, in different folders because you, you, know, you might want to organize your site and have different stuff in different folders. So at any rate, so the difference is, is we don't need to say something like this, http colon slash slash google.com, because it's one of our own pages. We can simply put in, in quotes, the name of the page. So I can go clio.html, and then I can put Clio, and there's my link to the other page. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to put a link going to Simba's page on Clio's page, so we can we can go back and forth between the two. So on the Simba page, there's a link to Clio. On the Clio page, there's a link to Simba. And we can go back and forth between the two. Now later on in the course, we'll talk about navigation in more detail on how to have a good navigation and all that. But I do want for your second assignment for you to link your two pages together. So you'll create, you've created a page for lab one. Uh, sure. Uh, we created a page for lab one. Um, you'll then create a page for lab two, and then you'll link them two together. So on page one, you'll have a link to page two. On page two, you'll have a link to page one. All right. Yes. Um, can we have the link to our other page be in the bad design section? Um, y yeah, it can be anywhere on the page. It does not have to be like I've, I've done it here. Yes. Mine just, like my lab two can link to lab one, lab one can go back. Yeah, let's look in lab. Um, again, usually what goes wrong with something like that is, is um, first of all, ensure that they're in the same folder, all right, for doing it this way. We'll, we'll discuss what happens if they're not in the same folder later on. Secondly, make sure you have the exact spelling right of everything. Make sure that that's an A link, 
Make sure that that says href. Make sure that your quotes are closed. Make sure that indeed it is a .html file as opposed to a .htm file or something like that. And uh, then, then we, we can take a look at it if there still are issues. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to create an external style sheet for these. And I want both pages to use the same style sheet. And again, this is the same thing I want you to do for, for lab two. So even if you put a style sheet in lab one, I want you to remove that code and put in an external style sheet. So what is an external style sheet? With an external style sheet, you take the style code out of your page and put it in a separate file. What's the advantage of that? The advantage of that is many pages can use the same external CSS file. So I'm going to start out relatively simple by just putting some real simple things in my CSS file and I'll make it an external file and then we'll have both of our two pages pointing to that. All right. So let me go and I'm going to fire up Notepad. And to start out, I'm just going to say body. Oops. Background color I will make yellow. And I'll make the text color. That's not text, that's color. My mistake. Now what shade, what, what color will the text be? It'll be a shade of gray and it'll be a fairly dark gray. All right. And I'm going to make my H1s have a color of black. All right. So that's my only two style rules. Notice that when I'm creating my external style sheet, I don't put the style tag in, right? What's the purpose of the style tag? When you have your style code inside your HTML file, <clears throat> you have to tell the browser, this is style code, this is HTML code. So you surround your style code with a style tag. Here, because we're putting it in a separate file, we don't have to do that. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to save it. And I will put it in here. Again, I will choose all files. And I'll give it a name. And I typically end my fi uh, CSS files with .css. So I will call it style.css. And I'll save it. And now I have to go in and have my two pages use this style sheet because I created the style sheet. It hasn't really taken effect yet because I haven't applied it to it. Yes. Oh, style sheets. Is there any way you can add like certain page overrides like one section? Yes, you can. We'll, we'll get to that. The question was is could you have uh, one page uh, to use a style sheet that's in an external file but maybe over overwrite one thing on that page. So yeah, we could. We might get into that today. If not, we'll definitely get into that uh, later on in the semester. All right. So now I have to go and make it so that these two pages use the same style sheet. And again, my aim was that you would do some investigating on your own because again, it's important to be able to take and uh, take a question and use Google or other resources to find the answer to it. All right. Um, you know, we can cover tons of things in class, but we can't cover everything. And there will always be the need to, to go and look stuff up. And in fact, even if we could cover everything, you probably won't remember everything. All right? And I'm not saying it about you personally. I can't remember everything. There's things that I look up probably every single time I do them. Because for whatever reason, they just don't stick. So I'm going to just Google external CSS. And I'll find a reference, and this has an example of it. And this tells me how to do it. In my HTML document, I have to put in this line of code. 
again in my head section, I say link rel equals style sheet, type equals text dot slash CSS, href equals, and then the name of my style sheet. And again, if it's in the same folder, all I have to do is give the, the, the name of the file. So style.css. Now, it's sort of unfortunate in a way that this is a link tag and this is also a link. But those are links using the same word two different ways. This is a link to another web page. This is pointing to an external style sheet. So now if we look at this, we'll notice that the style sheet has taken effect. Uh-huh. We have not used those before because we haven't used uh, this particular HTML tag. So we haven't used those attributes. This simply tells the browser that this is a style sheet. And specifically, it is a, a CSS style sheet. Style sheet is a keyword? Yeah, these, these two things will be verbatim. All right, that doesn't change regardless of what your style sheet is named. This will change depending on what you've named your style sheet. Yes? Put it in the head, correct. Would you be able to use a tag for that? No, you can't. You see, that's a different kind of link. So, yeah, you would not use an A tag for that. You would use a link tag for that. All right. And likewise, even though we call them hyperlinks, you use the A tag, the anchor tag to do a link um, on a page. All right, so now I can go and I can put the same thing in the Clio page. And now both my pages have the same look. So if I go to Clio, and has the same look as the Simba page does. And they'll stay consistent as I go back and I change them. All right. Um, a key point of design is one thing that you want to do is you want your, your site to have an overall look if you're developing a website. You don't want it to look like just a bunch of random pages thrown together. You sort of want to have an overall look and an overall appearance. So, therefore, being able to easily achieve sort of a consistency in the way the page looks is, is a big goal for us. So, being able to do this is really a great thing for us. Now, if we want to, if I look at this and I say, wow, that's a very bright yellow. It's too bright. It makes my eyes hurt. We can go into here and we can maybe get a different shade of yellow. Maybe we'll try for something like this. All right, that's more of a greenish yellow, I suppose. But the good thing is, is when we make that change, both changes, both pages get them. So maybe I decide I don't want yellow at all, but maybe I want a, um, light shade of blue. So maybe I'll try this. All right. The good news is, is both pages get that. Likewise, if I look at this and say, you know, that's not light enough, I want it to be lighter, I could go in and make that something like, um, All right, and it might be too light. So I'll go in and make this. Like that. All right. And again, the good news really is, is that we can go in and by making a change in one place, um, we make it throughout the site. So in this example, I have two pages. It doesn't matter how many pages you have. If you could have hundreds of pages, all of them would be pointing to the same style sheet. We make the change in one place, 
that change is reflected. Being able to create code that is easily changed is definitely one of our goals. Uh, we don't just want code that works. We obviously do want code that works, but in addition to working, what sort of elevates it to the next level is that it's easy to go back and change. So anything that we can do to make that easy to change is going to be a win for us uh, in, in the long run. Question. I think the instructions say that. I didn't see that, so I was wondering. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll double check it. A uh, couple things, you know, you can always resubmit if, if you didn't have one of them do that. Or I might just mention it. Uh, really, the point of this assignment is to see that you can, you can uh, apply an external style sheet. So I might not deduct points for it. Uh, so, all right, at, at any rate. Um, other questions? All right. Now we talked about images and uh, last time. And, and, and we, we talked about images such as this as being essentially content on the page, right? Because I could describe what Symbol looked like. I could say Symbol was a pretty big cat. He had a little notch in his ear. Um, he was maybe a Russian blue. People have told us that, but then other people have told us he wasn't. He's probably a mutt of the cat world, all right? Uh, and, and so on. I could say all those things, or I could put a picture up of them and, 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 and show it that way, all right? So in that respect, that, that image really is content on the page. Right? It's information about the cat to see what the cat looks like. There's other kind of images that sometimes you put on web pages, though, that are purely for decoration. They really don't add any content, but they're useful as far as, as uh, giving some sort of decoration uh, to the page. And especially uh, what we're talking about are things such as background images. All right. For example, we can actually, instead of having the background of the page be this kind of shade of blue or purple or whatever you call it, we could actually make an image as the background of the page. So let's take a look at, at doing that and we'll discuss sort of the advantages and, and the drawbacks of that. All right. I'm going to real quick see if I can find an example uh, on Google of a site that I think uses a good background image. Here's one. All right. Notice that the background isn't simply a color. The background of the page is itself an image. All right. And it looks pretty good. And they have some examples in here of other sites that use a background image. Now, what do you suppose the advantages and disadvantage of using a background image is, are? Go ahead. Well, I mean, if, if you have somebody in your, like, company or department or anything that, like, is an artist, they can create something that no one else has. Okay. All right. Number one, just to repeat that, um, you can really give your site a unique look. Um, if, if you have uh, an artistic background image, you can have your site look like, like no one else's site and really give it a distinct look. Yes? Um, with the downside, it seems like you wouldn't be able to put things in, like indented by pixels anymore. You'd have to do percent of the screen because it gets red. Okay. Uh, the statement was, it was about uh, indenting things with pixels. I don't know if that's necessarily uh, the case. We'll see how this behaves and we'll see if we're running into the issue.
that you're describing. Other downsides. Yes. Yeah, it, it can complicate the web page. You know, um, the 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 statement they said was tile it. Uh, we'll we'll talk about tiling the wallpaper uh, in a minute, but it can make it too busy. There can be too much going on if there's a background image. Yes, the colors might clash, colors might clash with the text. All right, especially if you use an actual photograph of something. Right, this is sort of a a. I mean, it's an image, but I would call that more of a texture. That's not really a picture of anything. You know, that is sort of a textured uh, background, and that, that adds something to the page. But if you take an actual photograph and use it as your background image, you definitely run the risk of having the text clash with uh, at least some part of it. Because again, a photograph, a typical photograph, will cover a range of colors, right? I mean, if I were to, you know, if I were sitting here and I snapped a photo, all right, really, you know, there's black in the photo, there's white in the photo, there's shades of blue in the photo, there's shades of green, there's shades of red. So pretty much, no matter what color I made the text, if it happened to hit up against the green background if it was green text, or the white background if it's white text, or the black background if it's black text, you're going to have a hard time reading it. Now, there's things that you can do to sort of mitigate that. But that's definitely a concern. Other <coughs> potential issues, yes? Um, well, an image is the fast words and I can cut both ways. Yeah, okay. Because if it's something that just really in relation to content, it can confuse people more. Okay. It can emphasize people. Okay. The, the statement was is that um, your background image uh, can serve to create a mood, and that can be a good thing. In other words, um, Let's look at one of these examples here. This background image about jazz clubs. There's a very stylized drawing of a saxophone there. And that sort of gives uh, a certain feel to it. The downside is, is it can be confusing if you don't have a good background image that really complements the, the content of your site. It, you know, it, it, it may look irrelevant and may be confusing. Or, as pe people said in previous examples, or can overclutter the site. Any other upsides or downsides? One big one is the, po uh, is the speed of downloading it. Right, that, that's extra stuff that you have to download. All right, that doesn't mean don't use it. It means if you're going to use it, do it right, make it count. All right, make it count. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you how to do it in CSS, and you know we'll do a bad example first. All right, and and then we'll we'll come back to uh, a good example. All right. We'll get the bad example out of the way, all right? And then we'll come back so we don't dwell on that. Let's go and let's... Let me take this image of Simba, which was the tiny image of Simba. Let's make that the background image of our page. It's about cats. What better than show a picture of a cat, right? So I'm going to go into my external CSS file and I'm going to say under background I'm going to put in instead of the name of a color I'm going to say URL parentheses then I'm going to put the name of the file. Close my quote close my parentheses and there's my page. Well, <laughs> that gets to what the statement was made about tiling the page, uh, tiling that. Um, by default, if you don't specify otherwise, if the image doesn't fill the page, the image will be tiled. That is, it will uh, repeat horizontally and repeat vertically. Now you can control that if you want to. You can have it either repeat just in one direction or both directions or neither direction. But as you can see here, 
that really clutters the page up. There's a lot going on and to the point that you virtually can't tell there's any text on this page if you didn't know it at just a glance, right? So it's distracting and, and uh, doesn't work. So what can we do instead? This is obviously not what we want to do. Well, there are some places that actually provide backgrounds that you can go and use and, and um, there's one site in particular that I am going to, um, that I've posted to an angel that will go and will try some of their backgrounds. And some of these backgrounds might work, some of them might not work, we'll, we'll just see. But they almost all will certainly be better than, than our first attempt. Right, let's see. Under resources, I have a link to some background patterns. Right here, link to background patterns. I also have a great example of bad web design that invariably a few students use as their example. Case of a background that's actually animated above anything else. Now that site was done on purpose to be bad. Uh, what really is horrifying is where you see websites where they were trying to do a good job and they, they come up with something that, that isn't particularly good. But we can go in here and we could go and we can pick and scan through these and I'll bet you we can come up with a, a at least a decent background for our cat page. Well, let's flip around here. I'm going to pick this one. This is actually a link to, the, to a separate site. It's goofy the way that Angel opens up links. It actually opened this up in a frame so it doesn't show the URL of it on top. Um, so that's unfortunate. Um, but this person does say, feel free to use any of these patterns on your own site. So, you know, we're covered as far as that goes. All right, I'm going to go and... I'm going to grab this file, and it's a GIF file. I'm going to put it here, and the name of the file is pattern underscore 129.gif. So I'm going to go to my external style sheet and change the name to that. This is where it's important to know the exact name of the file that you're using. All right? Because uh, if I'm not careful, I'm liable to think it's a JPEG file and put .jpg when it's actually a GIF file. Now, we can go and save this and look at our cat. Well, that's not bad. Again, I might want to make that a little darker then um, to have it stand out more. So I can certainly go into my CSS code and do that. Maybe we'll just go to black. All right. And it can be better. So it's a case where this sort of gets around the big image size, right? Because actually this image is only um, do, 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 do. It's only 2 KB. Uh, that, that's next to nothing. And the fact that it's tiled, it doesn't have to download it that many times. It only downloads it once and the browser is smart enough to tile it going across the page. So this will get around that. 
All right. The other thing I could do is we can go to um, a site such as Flickr, a photo site, and I want to search here. And I'm going to go search for cats. Now, I'm going to go to advanced search here. And I'm going to search for those images which are licensed with a Creative Commons license. And what that means is, again, we know that stuff on the web is copyrighted. We know that we can't simply use stuff that's copyrighted without taking some care. All right. Creative Commons license is where the person that created it says, yeah, you can go ahead and use it. Just give me a credit. So I will go in and I will search for pictures of cats All right, that are Creative Commons license. And I'll do a search. And maybe I'll pick this one. Yeah, that is creepy. I am not going to pick that one. <laughs> Let's pick this one. That one's nice and, and non-creepy. Uh, and I will pick um, the medium size, I guess. I guess we could go with the large, but I'll pick the medium. And I will download it. And I'll save it. And I will go and it probably downloaded it to the desktop. Here we go. I'll copy it into my folder. I'm going to give it a simpler name so I don't have to type all that in. I'll just call it BG for background. And I'll go in here into my CSS file in the notepad. And I will <coughs> put in that name. Save it. And... All right, look at that. Well, it's not bad, not necessarily great. I'm actually going to go and download the larger size and see if that works. I'll bet you that will actually be better. We'll look at that in a second. Oh, I th <laughs> thought that was my Windows Explorer window. Didn't realize it was Notepad. That's not good. Let's move that guy out and move this guy in. And we'll call it BG. Not a bad background. Now, the question is, how do I keep it from tiling? This isn't necessarily a good one to show that for. Uh, so let's go back to let's go back to this one. If I can find it. Yeah, there we go. Let's go and do this one. All right. You can go in here, and I'm going to try to do this from memory. Oops. I believe if you say no dash repeat, that will not tile it. Yeah, thank you. So if you say no repeat, that won't tile it. Or you can say repeat x, and that will repeat along the x-axis. 
which is horizontally, if I remember my Cartesian planes. Yeah. Or I could say repeat y, and that'll be vertical. Alright, so it repeats it vertically. By vignette, um, um, yeah, you, you would do that through a, through an editor. You'd have to do that through an image editor. You would not do that through CSS. So you'd you'd make the image look the way you wanted to. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, if you use something that had transparency, yeah, you would then you could then set a background color, and that background color would peek through. Yes. Well, you can put a background image on, on anything, right? So, for example, let's go and let's, let's really live it up on this one. Yeah, we're having fun now. All right. I'll put a background image on that, and then on my H1, I'll put another background image. And let's see. I'll do the tile on that one, which was caused what? called what? I'll change that to bg.gif. How do I know what has to go in quotation marks? Um, within HTML, it is any HTML attribute, the value of that attribute. So if I say href equals some file name, that file name needs to be in quotes. In CSS, about the only thing you put in quotes would be, again, like the exact name of a file. Everything else generally isn't. But the HTML answer is easy. Um, it's any, any attribute value. Yes? Um, as far as file names goes, is there, can you, is, so long as they're in quotes, can, if the file name has a space in it, do you use the space? Yeah, you use the space. I generally speaking avoid, you know, I will rename it to, to eliminate the space okay. for that. Yeah. Like but put an underscore or something like that in. Yeah. Or a dash. I, I generally, I generally avoid file names with uh, or page names with that. Now, there's a few things that we could do, even um, if we wanted to uh, improve this a little bit, uh, a little bit more. One thing we could do would be to, and again, I'm not, in this particular case, I'm just demonstrating. I'm not really. Um, out to make a, a, a great page. But I could, for example, let me copy this, paste it. If you're having trouble with your text up against the background image, one thing you could do is you could go in and edit this, and you can do things like give it sort of a uh, washed out look. So it almost looks like a watermark. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm turning the brightness on and turning the contrast down. That almost looks like a watermark, uh, you know, that you would see on, on like a, a page or something. And I can go and save it that way. So then, um, as we go in and, and view this page, you see you'd run into less of an issue of a contrast because, because it's, it's more in the background. It's more of a watermark. <coughs> the other thing you could do, let's say I made a very poor choice and I made the text color of my body white. Alright. 
where you can barely or you actually can't even see that. What I could do is I could do something like this. I could say, you know, H2, give it a background of I'll make it a shade of blue. And then you can you still get the background look, but you you get uh, you get the text on a on a solid background so that you can see it. Yes. Uh huh. Correct. If it's not in the folder, uh, essentially, if you've done anything, we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail in, in a class or two. Essentially, what you do is you follow the same conventions like for a DOS path. So, for example, if it would be a folder underneath it, you'd say folder name slash file name. If it was up a folder, you'd say dot dot slash file name. So you'd follow the same sort of conventions that you do when you're doing paths in, in, in DOS or, or, for that matter, Unix. All right? Uh, but we'll look at we'll look at more more thorough examples uh, of that later on. Um, the one thing that you can do too that's kind of neat is let me see. Let's say uh, where am I? Let's say I want to make the background of the page match one of these colors on the cat. All right. In other words, I want to match sort of the gold color. Let's see how we could do that. Well, let's open this up. Let's open it up in paint. And you got this little, um, supposed to be like an eyedropper, where you can actually, you know, the idea is, is that you're like sucking up just a little bit of the paint off of the, off of the picture. So I'll click on that. And I'm going to go and click on, let's say I want the color of the eyes. So I'll click on that. I can then go to Colors, Edit Colors. Oops. And this shows me that that color that I hit the eyedropper on has an RGB of 242, 237, 215. Now, that's not how we show colors in HTML, unfortunately. But we can do one of two things. One is we could convert that to hex. All right. Believe it or not, your Windows machine has the facility to do that. We can go under Accessories, Calculator, and we could type in 242 and then click Convert to Hex. 242 is F2 in hex. The other thing we can do is we can use a different syntax to specify the color. So I could go into the style sheet and say for my H2 make the background RGB 242,237,215. I'm pretty sure that will work as well. And there, well, it did work, and that matched that color. I probably would also, in this case, want to go and change the text color back to black. I'll change it up here. To hex, uh, I just went into the uh, Windows calculator. I typed in the number in decimal. Well, first of all, I went to, I switched from standard to scientific. It, I, I didn't actually do that the first time because it was already in scientific mode, but you can go from view and switch to scientific. Then you can go in and you can put any number in 
and then click hex to convert it to hex. Or again, the other, the other alternative way to do it is to use that RGB syntax, which stands for red, green, and blue. And you don't supply hex, you supply decimal for this. Now, if you think about all the things you can do now with just colors and backgrounds, you can, if you want to, create the ugliest web page imaginable, right? <laughs> Because you could literally, every single tag, give a different background image for. So have cats as background images for your H1, dogs for your background images for H2, snails for the background image of the body, and so on and so on and so forth. This is where the design aspect comes in and the discretion to know how to use these things effectively. All right? And how... You don't want to overkill people. You want to put things on the page to make your page look attractive and to emphasize certain things, but you don't want to overwhelm people with stuff that is just going to serve to distract them. Now again, I was doing this just to illustrate, but, you know, that's not bad just for, for an example. There's a few things I'd change if I was doing this for real, but again, not bad. Yes? Yes. What you actually have to do is you have to make the background, or I'm sorry, you have, to, you have to control the width of the H1. So what we could do, the easiest way, and again, we'll spend a lot of time talking about this, we could do like this, width, maybe make the width 50% um, of the page, or make the width 400 pixels, or something like that, and then it doesn't go all the way across. That would make that nicer. We could do probably the same thing on the H2s as well. Now, is there really any syntax um, like structure to the CSS? Or is it just as long as everything is kind of separated by those semicolons? Uh, yeah, for the most part. On a, the question was is, is does like the sequence or anything like that matter in CSS? I won't say no, it doesn't matter at all, but for the most part, um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I didn't have to define body, then H1, and H2. I could have defined H2, then body, then H1. I could have put the width at the beginning of the style rule or at the end of the style rule. So that kind of sequence doesn't matter. The only, the only uh, instance in which sequence m uh, could matter is if there was a conflict between two rules. If you specified using two different things, two different rules, uh, an attribute, then the browser would pick one, and for that, uh, the order would be important. Uh, but usually you don't do stuff like that, so, you know. Uh, so I can't say no, it doesn't matter at all, but in general, um, you know, um, you're pretty safe from that. All righty. So. Again, this is where the design aspect comes in, you know. Um, we will be going over tons of more stuff in CSS. Generally what I do is I introduce a few CSS concepts, and then as people ask questions, either here or in lab, I answer those, all right. Um, if you want to play with this, and I strongly encourage you to play with it, uh, that's the way to get good at, at anything, is to take an example or, or whatever and, and change it, play around with it. Again, uh, go to W3 Schools and, and see all the different things that you can change via CSS. Uh, you can change fonts, font size, position, width, height. You know, you can, you can have a field day and, and, and change just about every aspect of the page. I actually linked that a couple times in my... Okay. Yeah, it's a great, great resource. All right. We'll see you over in lab then.